everybody for those of you who don't know my name is michael forrest and welcome to it's quest time now before we get going i'm going to ask you guys if you can stay off of this uh, raised up stage area here this way nobody blocks this big display behind me and it gives me a little bit of room to move around do the whole hosting thing also if i can ask if you guys not send me any text messages while i'm up here because that can really throw me off because like you know you're moving around you know you're having a good time and all of a sudden there's this big wall of text in front of you and it's like hitting the wall except it's a wall of text you know so if you guys can hold off any comments like that until the end i'd really appreciate that we will be taking questions and comments at the end but really if you do need to get in touch with us the best way to do that is to join our discord uh also uh you know you may have noticed in your lower left you've got this uh you've, you've got this microphone icon at the very top of that and when that microphone icon is clear that means we can hear you and everything that's happening in your environment and i do mean everything uh, it looks kind of like this right here right and uh you know listen so uh, we've gone ahead and we've turned that to red. This means if somebody comes in your space and says, hey, are you still on that thing? Well, we're not going to hear that, so you feel free to answer them. Likewise, if you've got a barking dog in the background, right, you're not going to face social ruin back at the campfire by becoming known as the avatar that suddenly started barking during its quest time. All right, so we spared you that. But just because you're muted does not mean you can't express yourself. You're going to notice that in your menu wheel you have this pink cheek smiley face, and when you click on it, your emoji panel is going to open up in the air in front of you, right? And it's going to be a lot of options to express yourself. So I share something really deep, you know, really powerful up here and it touches you and it starts to build up. You can just let it out. Just let it flow just like that. Right? Maybe i got some backup dancers backstage, right? And they come out here and we break into Quest Time the Musical and you're very impressed by the production value. You can throw up the applause. I look forward and I can take a moment to drink it all in because it feels good. All right, now also if I ask you guys a yes or no question, you can say yes by smiling like that or, by, or say no by frowning like this, right? Uh, and, you know, maybe I say or do something funny. You want to show me you're laughing? You can use a silly face emoji just like that, right? Or, uh, you know, and then there's this thing. This is by far the most distracting of all the emojis, all right? I think we can all agree. A giant hand coming out of your head is pretty distracting, right? Uh, so we're going to use this as a signal. If my voice goes choppy or maybe my moderators have had enough and they're going to set the stage on fire, don't laugh. They've done that before, and they're going to do it again. And sometimes, you know, it's happening behind me, and I can't see it, right? So I'm going to rely on you guys to tell me. All right, and that's going to be our bond. That's going to be our back. And then there's that X in the middle of the emoji panel. That'll close it. But it's a good idea to leave it open during events like this because it gives me some feedback. It lets me know how I'm doing. And also, you know, it also, more importantly, it's going to let the people around you know what you're experiencing. So if the person next to you starts going like this, right, that means they found something funny. And you may not agree. You might be like, that's not funny at all. I'm going to go stand over here. And you can totally do that because this is a VR. Except not right here because we agreed you guys weren't going to stand on the stage, right? That's our pact. That's our bond. you got to respect that. All right. So now, uh, let's see. Now, I, just let me get an idea what kind of audience I'm dealing with here, right? So we're going to see how to set out. Uh, how many of you are on a quest right now, the original quest? You know, put your hands up or show me some hearts. All right, now, how many of you are on a quest too? Hands up or, or some smiley faces or something like that? All right, well, that's a lot of you. Okay, all right. How many of you um, are new to alt space? And new all space users here? Okay, well, that's a lot of you. Well, welcome to all space. I really think you're going to enjoy it. How many of you are new to VR? We have any new people like you've never been in VR before and this is really new? Okay, good. Well, you're definitely in the right place. All right, cool. Well, that gives me some idea. Thanks for that. Let's me know how to set out, right? What's going on there? Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see here. Um, but listen, when I was waiting for my quest to arrive, um, I started out on an Oculus Go. And I'd control you on an Oculus Go. If you're not aware, you only have that one hand, right? So, and I grew up in Brooklyn, so I'm used to talking with both my hands a lot. But in all space, all anybody saw me doing was this, right, with the one hand. So I couldn't wait for this controller to arrive. And when it did, right, I took one look at it, and I'm like, you know what? That's a lot of buttons. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to get used to. And if you're moving from a Quest to a Quest 2, and you take a look at it when the controllers arrive, you're like, you know what? That's still a lot of buttons, but I know what most of them are, right? Because they really haven't been a lot of changes as far as that's concerned. But all the buttons, they basically do the same thing. All right. Uh, there's only a couple of key differences, and I'd like to go over that now because, listen, my main goal here is to get you guys used to being in all space on an Oculus Quest. Right. Want to get used to, uh, you know, uh, you know, get used to the whole experience there. Right. So how to get the most out of uh, also, you know, all space on an Oculus Quest. Right. Now, the first two differences you have, how this compares to the original Quest is you have now a thumb rest here. And when you touch that thumb rest, you're going to find that your thumb goes down. You can actually see it go down when you touch that thumb rest right there. Right. The other difference is on the original quest, this button here on the bottom 
right? On the original quest, that's flat. And on the quest two, it's kind of concave, which, you know, kind of makes it help feel it a little bit better. But other than that, the controls are like pretty much exactly the same. So if you're on a, the original quest or you're on a quest two, right? Everything we're gonna cover here in terms of the movement stuff, because I'd like to make sure everybody is very comfortable with the controls first, all right? Because that's probably the toughest thing to get used to, all right? So uh, the first thing we're gonna talk about is, look, uh, if you're having like a, a standing experience, right? Uh, you know, actually, first before that, let's talk about the grip button. On the side here, right here, you usually press it with your third finger, right on the inside of the controls there. You're gonna use this to interact with your environment, right? So if you are, uh, you know, it's gonna, you can use those, uh, those bean bags in the campfire and the skyrockets, or if you're building worlds with your own two hands, you're gonna interact with things with the grip button, and that's gonna kind of actually change your world builder. That's gonna change the behavior of your right thumbstick when you grab an object in the world editor. You're gonna find that the right thumbstick no longer moves you around. You're gonna find that it's actually changes the object the size of it. All right, I'm being told my voice is choppy. Anybody else think my voice is choppy? Anybody? A little bit? Yeah, all right, listen, uh, this has been happening in Alt Space. I'm going to, you know, re-enter the space so I can like, kind of clear my throat out here. I'll just be just a moment here, one moment. All right, that should do it. I don't see anybody yet. Okay, we'll let everybody load in here. There we go. There we go. Here we are. All right, good, excellent. All right, so now, uh, as I was saying, that grip button, all right, hopefully that cleared my voice. Is my voice better? Voice clear? Everybody? Yeah? All right, good. All right, I see a lot of nods. All right, that's awesome. All right, well, that grip button, all right, in case you've never used it before, maybe my backup dancers can toss me out a couple right here. Whoa, that's not a throw. All right, here we go. Give that a try. If you've never tried the grip button, Game at basketballs here and you know just uh you know toss those around a little bit now if you're having a room scale experience if you're in here and you're standing up right what you're going to find right is that uh you know you, you're going to find that uh, sometimes when people tell you to open that main menu you're not going to see it right you're going to look down to your left you're like where is that thing they're going to say it's on your left there's a blue and white triangle and you look down there and you go, but there's nothing there because a lot of times you walk out past your main menu right and if this happens to you you got to remember that on an oculus quest and on an oculus 2 your your uh on an oculus quest to your main menu oh great i've lost my slides hang on oh that's just great all right uh morgan if you can grab the uh the slides for me because like they're they're just gone right uh don't need you to change them yet so just hang, hang on that be ready for that uh all right so slight technical problems there's nothing about a live performance you know anything that can go wrong will go wrong all right but uh now as i was saying occasionally you're going to walk out past your main menu and when that happens you've got to remember that your main menu is in your hands at all times right so what you've got right here is you've got on your left controller on the bottom on the quest 2 you got this little concave button down toward the bottom and on the original quest it's a flat button right the say does the same thing it's going to open up your main menu so if you walk out past your main menu and somebody says open your main menu you know all you have to do is press down on that left button on the bottom of your left controller there and uh you'll, your menu will open if you press it again your menu will close you don't have to press that blue and white triangle button if you don't want to i haven't touched that thing in months right when i want to open the main menu i just flick my hand out like that right and my menu opens right and i'm like all right cool and if i want to close it i just flick my hand out like that again you don't have to do the hand flick i just think it's cool all right so feel free to use it if you want all right now also what you're going to find is that uh you know, you, on the controller here on your, uh, what is it, on the right controller down toward the, uh, up to the top there, that raise that button, right? Uh, this is your teleport button, right? This is actually a cool way to get around. If everybody lines up with me along this wall here, right, you can uh, aim, press that top button on your right controller, right, and aim at the ground. You can see a blue circle up here right there, right? Now, when you see that blue circle, you can aim it. So let's aim it across that brick wall, and as soon as we let go, boom, we get flown right across the room. Everybody teleport over to me while there's still time. Now, if you squeeze your left con your trigger button, right, the trigger button on your left controller, this is going to cause you, and whether you're walking or flying, this is going to cause you to accelerate or go faster. So why don't we try that? Like, try going fast. Try going in, a, like, a big circle here. Maybe make, like, a hurricane, you know, like a whirl little whirlpool action in here. And let's see how you're doing. Let's see the shape of this thing. Let's see how everybody's doing here. All right. Not too bad. It's not really circular, though. It's kind of like, um, I don't know what to call this. It's kind of like, it's, it's not even a figure eight. Sometimes they do a figure eight. Is everybody getting busy from doing that? If you're new to your, you might be getting dizzy. Do that. Don't, don't do it if you're getting dizzy. All right. And listen, listen. if you're here today, you already know the basics, right? You know the left thumb's just going to move you around like this. You know the right thumb's just going to turn you in these circles. And you know if you combine them, you're going to get these big, elaborate circles that make my presentation so much more dramatic. Everybody do this. Go in like a kind of a small circle like this. Because when I look at it, it's going to look like you guys are ballroom dancing. Let me see that. Oh, wow. Fancy. You guys are fancy. I always say I wish you guys could see what this looks like. And now you can. We, if you notice, we've got Raven Eye floating up there. That's actually our YouTube camera. So if you want to like check in a couple of weeks, you'll probably see this episode and you'll see yourself moving around the space, which is pretty neat. All right, so you can give that a try. 
Um, all right, and also, uh, let's see, we ha also have on the controllers here, we have, um, uh, let's see, there we go. Oh, yeah. yeah, on the Quest 2 and on the Quest, you got to worry about vertical height, right? First time I came into all space on a Quest, I went to the campfire, and I noticed everybody was much shorter than me, right? And I'm like, what's going on? All you have to do is on your left controller, that thumbstick, if you press that down, that's going to change your vertical height. So if somebody's willing to like change your vertical height and show everybody what this looks like, you come up kind of toward the stage where you're you know, all raised up. Anybody willing to do that? Nobody? Wow, okay. Let's see. You know, let's see here. Anybody willing to do that? Here we go. We got uh, Melanie here. Now, Melanie, show everybody what happens when you... Oh, Melanie went away. All right? Melanie, you got a little closer stage blocker. Show everybody what happens when you press down that left thumbstick. So you come up again like that. All right, stop right there. This way it doesn't get you. All right, come up again. Oh, good. down. That's fine. That's good, too. Now, press on your left thumbstick. Show everybody what happens. Boom. See how she snapped into place like that? Right. Also, likewise, like let's say the key to this is your it, this movement is attached to your head. Right. So if I look down and I press down on my left thumbstick, I'm going to pop up a little bit. I'm going to be a little bit taller than the person I'm next to. Right. If I look up and press down on the left thumbstick, I'm going to be a little bit shorter than the person I'm next to. Right. Now, if I look straight ahead, that's going to set me to the actual, you know, the perfect height of an all space avatar. Right. So this is like how you can reset your height. if You feel like so if you're ever feeling too tall or too short, just press down on that left thumbstick. Right. Uh, also, now you're going to notice that uh, on your, uh, your, some of these buttons, they do the same thing. And I've lost my laser pointer, so bear with me here again. Let me try to grab this here. Here we go. All right. Uh, if you, some of these buttons do the same thing, so it can make this a little bit easier to take in. Right. You're going to find that your select button here and your right trigger here, and if you have your left pointer enabled, this select button here, they all do the same thing. If you hold down on your right trigger right now and move your hand through the crowd, just like look around at everybody while you're holding down that right trigger and watch what happens. You're going to see everybody's name tag appear above their head. And that's how I know everybody's name so quickly. That's how I know that this is Gilly and that this is uh, Coolbo. And this is, uh, you know, Marco, really loud, just really a lot of O's in there, right? And also uh, Jeff Rowe, we got a lot. So basically, if you move your hand like this, you'll be able to see everybody's name tag like that, right? Uh, so that can help you, like, you know, visually identify people, and that's uh, that's good to do there. Okay, well, now that's – all right, so now also another port button you need to be aware of, and don't press this now because if you guys disappear, I'm going to feel it. All right, but you're going to notice on your right controller, you have this bottom concave button, and if you're on the original Quest, it's a flat button. All right, you got to think of this as your reject button. This is really the best way to leave alt space, right? Uh, and you're going to press this, like, if, uh, you know – if, um, you know, say somebody comes in your space and says, hey, you know, dinner's ready, something important like that, you're going to press that to quit all space. But before I do, listen, when I was showing you how to run fast before, right, uh, you know, we were going that fast movement thing, right, is look, you can combine this with teleport in a variety of ways. Like, for instance, if you're facing the stage, right, and you hold down your, your right, your left trigger there, and you back up like that, and you teleport at the ground, you're doing the all space moonwalk, right? I hope that's not a copyright violation because I enjoy doing this bit. Uh, also, you know, another thing, like, I, you'll notice I come down in the audience a lot during these presentations, and uh, one time I was doing this, and I got kind of surrounded by the audience, right? It turns out, and I did this on Reflex, you're always learning new stuff in all space, but I reached my hand over my shoulder like that, and I ended up teleporting backwards. So keep that in mind. You can teleport backwards if you want to, just by putting your hand over your head and just, you know, hitting that teleport button, all right? Uh, and look, while this is a lot to take in, it, it, you will get used to it. Like, uh, when I was messing around with the teleport stuff, I went to the Universe, and back then that event was held in a really large world, right? And I walked up to the edge when it was over, and I'm looking over the edge, and as I'm looking over the edge, I fell off the world. Right. And as I'm falling, before I could respawn, I looked over and I saw this cliff there and I aimed at it and I teleported to it and I, and I teleported myself to safety. And in that moment, I knew I was finally getting used to the controllers because I did it on reflex. There's going to come a time, even though you always feel the plastic of the controls in your hand, there's going to come a time where these actually become your hands. We actually don't think about it. And that's where you want to be, because if you're thinking about your controls and you think about your headset, you're not doing it right. All right, you got to actually be here in this room, in this space with each other. It's really all about immersion, right? And you're going to know, like, for example, if I tell everyone to look out that window right here, right, I'm not thinking about how I'm pointing. I'm just doing it, right? Uh, and, and the way you do this is if you hold down your grip button, you're going to notice that your hands go into a point. And try that now. Go put your, put your, squeeze that grip button so your hands point. Right. And you can combine this. Like, you can give me a Brooklyn hello. Everybody go like this and be like, how are you doing? Right. That's how we do it back home. Yeah. All right. And also, uh, you know, you can, now you can also put them together like this and make a triangle with your fingers. Right. That's the all space logo. Right. Now hold it high like you mean it. Show me some all space pride. All right. Yeah. Got a good stretch on. That's good. That's very good. All right. Also, if you twist them together like this, you can make kind of a picture frame. Right. Maybe you squeeze that trigger, get a little shutter action going on. Remember this moment forever. It'd be so cool if you could take a screenshot like this. That would be awesome. If you hold your grip button and your trigger button and give me two thumbs up, let me know I'm doing a good job up here. Maybe I'm not. You're like, you know what? That voice chop he was, but then he couldn't find his laser pointer. Two thumbs down, Michael Forrest. Right. Maybe you're not sure. Give me a little bit of both. Just like that. Right. Or and then there's this thing. I don't know. People have been doing that. I don't know what it means. People keep doing it. I don't know. But, uh, you know, and listen, the best way to pick this stuff up, 
one of the first quest times we ever had a bunch of people came up the stage and they were going like this so i did it back right and then the whole audience started going like this all right it looked really cool you know people all around the world doing this one thing right and that's what you do if you see somebody doing a gesture that you like you copy them and you make it your own all right and then after a while you're not going to think about how you're doing it your hands are just going to automatically do it so when i go to give somebody a thumbs up i don't think about it i just do it if i want to go point at somebody i don't think about it i just do it and you will too all right now as i was saying that bottom button on your right controller this is your eject button and this is good to press when things go wrong morgan if you could hit that slide for me if you got it all right awesome very cool all right now when things go wrong what i mean by this right is sometimes like you're in all space right and you i'm looking out the window i'm having a nice time and i turn my head back and the whole world moves with me that can make you feel kind of dizzy all right something's gone wrong right so what do you do well you press that eject button all right and then you're going to have a menu come up where you can actually press resume and this is great if you press it on accident like you're dancing around the universe you're having a good time whoops you press that button all right now you press resume and no one will ever know you were gone and you won't have to destroy you with her awesome admin power right you know but occasionally you are going to want to press this on purpose right like when that when something goes wrong like that like if i'm looking you know and i look to my left and there's this black void on the edge of my screen right and there's another black void there on the right and like uh oh something's gone wrong and then all my friends are frozen in space like that so i'll press that eject button right and there are going to be times when you press that and nothing happens and you're going to be like michael forrest lied to me i'll have my revenge right that's not what's going on occasionally your, your app is going to freeze your device is going to freeze and not just in all space but in other apps as well and it pays to know how to handle this when it happens right for example uh you know a lot of times when i first got my quest what i did was i would take my headset off to restart it because that's how you fix that by restarting it um but occasionally when if your device is plugged in and it's not in a charge cycle, and you don't have that charge light on, and it takes a long time to restart it, you're going to think there's something wrong with your headset. So it pays to know how to restart it while it's still on your head. And the way you do this is you take your index finger, and you swipe it up and down on your right side of your headset. You're going to feel that raised up power button, right? And now when you take your left index finger, and you kind of squeeze it on the other side. This way you don't move the headset all over your face, right? You just squeeze them together like that. And I find it helps to go into a deep concentration pose. And after about four seconds, you concentrate so hard, your avatar disappears, and you get plunged into the darkness, but you don't let go. You just hang on. And after about 10 seconds, you start wondering, man, why did Oculus make it take so long? And after about 15 seconds, you know, your mind starts to wander around. You start thinking about friends you haven't seen in a while. You wonder how they're doing, you know. 20 seconds go by, you start thinking about life. You start asking the big questions. After about 20-something seconds go by, all of a sudden, out of the darkness, the Oculus logo is going to appear like the bat signal. And when it starts to pulse, you take your fingers away like that, right? And you're going to find your device starts normally. And this is going to solve most of the problems that you're going to have, not just in all space, but on other apps as well. But occasionally something more serious might happen. There was one time where I came out of all space and I found that, you know, uh, I got this message that said Oculus Room is closing. And I'm like, uh-oh, you know, what? this is bad. And there was a boom button to press OK. So I pressed OK. There was no other choice. And then the screen just said loading, right? And I'm like, what's going on? So I didn't know. So I went into my deep concentration pose, right? And the devi device restarted. And as soon as it came back on, it still said loading, right? So I asked Google about it. I said, Google, what's up? And Google said, well, a lot of people are having this problem. You're going to have to do a factory reset. And it pays to know about the factory reset. The only thing about the factory reset you have to keep in mind is you're going to lose everything you have saved on your device, right? So you're going to have to reinstall all of your apps. If you had any pictures saved, you're going to lose those, right? Uh, and also all of your preferences. You may even lose your Pete Saber scores, okay? So this is serious business, people, right? Only use this in an emergency. All right, but it will put the device back the way it was the day you got it, which for a lot of you in here, that's like fairly you know, recently. That's like, what, a week ago, right? But it pays to know that you have this option, okay? Uh, now, also, uh, you know, while you're doing this, right, uh, let's see here. Okay, yeah, all right. Uh, so, Morgan, if you wouldn't mind hitting the slide for me. Thanks. All right, now, listen, uh, if you're here today, you're already familiar with the Guardian system. You already did, like, the tour. You danced with the robot. That was cool, right? You know, um, and, you know, you, you did all that, and you are familiar with the Guardian system. But you may not be able to ha familiar with uh, how to use the Guardian system to your advantage in all space, and you can. If you're new to VR, especially, and you're experiencing dizziness, one quick way to deal with this is to look at your hand, right? And I'm not joking. I know that's not your real hand, but what you do is you look at your hand like this, and you're going to find once you focus on that hand, the dizziness is going to start to fat start to go away and when it does slowly take the hand in a way will take in the world around you right and you find this will help but you can also use your guardian system for this purpose too but i like to tell people when they mess with their guardian be very careful you don't want to injure yourself and you don't want to damage your device because a lot of times in all space you see somebody walking along and they look like they're having a good day right and all of a sudden bam they hit a real world wall this let me tell you those real world walls are a menace and they need to be stopped right they do all right i'm trying to fight against it but i tell you what if you're in if you're having a standing a room scale experience and you walk up to your boundary always lead with your hands and when you do and you get to the edge of that you know the grid appears right and you, you know and reacts to your hands right you can actually still touch your thumbsticks 
So you can still move your avatar around. Like if I walk up to my real world wall right now with my hands out and that grid appears, I can still touch my thumbstick. So while I'm standing still in the real world, my avatar is moving around like this, right? And I can actually go up to the, my uh, screen here, this display, and line this up with my real world wall. So when I back up from it to take it all in, right, and I fall off the stage into the audience, let's say you guys are on a nice crowd. All right. Why don't you all try to come over here and try to mess with me? Stick your hands in my face. Try to throw me off any way you can. And I'm just going to look at this screen here. All right. You guys are not even trying. There, here we go. I just mess me up, really. And you're going to find that I'm not losing my place. I'm not having a hard time talking. And you know why? Because no matter what you guys do, I can still see that display. I have a frame of reference and it auto makes me, automatically makes me feel balanced and comfortable. You don't even have to use your wall for this, right? If you have like a desk or a table in your space, you can line it up with say the edge of the stage and it gives you a frame of reference and it's going to help you feel more balanced while you get used to VR. All right, that, that'll really help a lot with that. Another thing you can do is you can switch from a room scale experience to a stationary experience pretty effortlessly in all space, right? So like if I'm up here and I'm like, you know what? I've hosted over 400 events in all space and I'm tired. I need to sit down. Right, so I'm going to go up to the edge of my boundary there, right? I'm going to make sure i got enough room to move my head through it. And when I move my head through, the pastor camera goes off, right? But there's now an experimental feature where you double tap your headset. And when you do, right, you're going to, you're going to, your pastor camera is going to go off. And you're going to see, right, that you have, uh, you know, in your real world. And I'm going to see I have my chair over there. So I'm going to go sit in my chair right now. Right now I sit in my chair there, right? Uh, you know, when I sit in the chair there, the grid's going to pop up. And I'm going to, you know, say I want to have a stationary experience. And I'll find that not only am I still in VR, but I'm still in all space. I never left. And this works in the other direction, too. You're going to find that, like, you know, let's say that I feel like getting up and walking around, right? Well, sometimes when you get up and you step into your, guardians, your guardian there, uh, sometimes your headset can lose your guardian. And when that happens, it's going to ask you to draw a new boundary, which normally is not a big deal. But for me, when it happened to me, I was, I was helping to moderate an event, and it was like two minutes left in it, right? So like, uh-oh, i got to finish this. So I'm drawing the boundary out, and I'm like, why is my play space so big? And of all the times I had to moderate for an admin, why did it have to be today, right? And then when, the, when, you know, when I closed the grid, you know, the grid came up out of the floor, and I found that not only was I still in VR, but I was still in alt space. And this is going to enable you to transition back and forth so that you can be comfortable. So it pays to keep that in mind. If you're in an event and you want to sit down, you'll be able to without having to log out. Right? Likewise, if you're, you know, you're really into it and you're like, oh, man, that Michael Forrest, got me going. I'm all excited. I'm going to run around. I'm going to do the things. Right? You will, you know, if you feel like getting up, you can. Right? You don't actually have to leave the event to do it. Right? No one's going to know you were gone while you were adjusting all that stuff. All anyone's going to see is you frozen in space like this. Yeah, and that's it. You know, and then you come back in, you'll be moving around. All right, so you have that option for that. All right, now, uh, also, one cool thing that you can do is you can actually merge realities, right, by going up, going up to the edge of your guardian, make sure you got enough room to move your head through, right? And as soon as you move your head through, there's like this sweet spot where you'll be able to see both realities at the same time. And this will give you a good idea of the scale of all space avatars when you see them in a familiar environment. Like, did you know that all space avatars are about six feet tall and are a lot wider than you would think? And it's really, you really won't be able to tell this until you see them in a familiar environment, like your living room or your office, wherever it is you VR from. And Morgan, if you want to hit that slide for me, appreciate that. Let's see, boom, slide, no? Okay, you're not into it. All right, you know what? Oh, there we go. All right, cool. All right, so uh, now one of the great things about both quests is they just work. And that doesn't mean they can't work better. There's a larger variety of accessories that are available for both the Quest 1 and the Quest 2. But the thing is, with the Quest 2, these aren't just accessories. These are more like necessities, all right? Because there's some stuff, like I tell you, the strap that the Quest, the Quest 2 comes with, it's not exactly comfortable, all right? So getting, like, the Elite strap or the gaming strap can actually make it, uh, you know, a much better experience, right? And what we're going to do now is I'm going to open up the uh, for questions now, so you're going to notice a raise hand button appear on your lower right as if by magic because that's what magic looks like in VR, right? And what I want you guys to do is if you've tried any of the accessories, I want to hear about them, all right? Because we're putting together a new slide of accessories, and I want to know what's important to all of you. I want to know well, what accessories you've tried. All right, so if you've tried any accessories for the Quest 2, I want to hear about that, all right? Uh, let's see, we have Antonio80. Let's see, here we go. Antonio, you have a question, or uh, you, have you tried an accessory? Where are you, Antonio? You out there? Antonio80. Going once? All right, maybe you press that button by accident. That's possible. That can happen. We also we have uh, Woodland Moose. Let's see here. I'm trying to have trouble getting the uh, Antonio off the thing there. Okay, that, that's weird. All right, let's see. Woodland. Let's see. Oh, actually, it looks like we've got Reverend. Reverend Rowe, you're on the air? Reverend, Reverend, I feel like a radio host. You out there? <laughs> Yeah, there I'm you are. Here. Where are you? Uh, I had a question. I saw. I don't uh, see it. Where are you? I'm up here. I'm on. I'm up on the catwalk. Oh, okay. I see you in the balcony. Okay. Wait. You were the guy that was frowning before. What were you frowning about? Uh, I saw that. 
Yeah, you oh. always could. Uh, I don't know if it was me or if that it can, was you, but <laughs> now that can happen. That's uh, that's all space. You know, we do what we can. So what's up? Yeah. Um. So my question was, I saw that you can get prescription lenses for your Oculus. Yes. Is that right? Yes, that's true. That's true. And if you were using prescription lenses, a quick note: if you were using uh prescription lenses on your Quest, your original Quest, and you upgraded to a Quest Two, you can still use those same lenses. I'm told. All right. So you know, save a little bit of money there. But you absolutely can. Uh, actually, we have a link to it on our event page. If you go to allvr.com and you go into the upper left where it says channels, you're going to see a list of all these Allspace event channels. And down toward the bottom, you're going to see where it says Ravenhall events. They tell me it doesn't mean anything to be down there, but that's where you'll find us. When you press on that, you're going to you're going to see our event page open up in front of you. And on the left-hand side, there's going to be a list of all these you know uh, recommended products, and you'll find that the lenses are listed there. Uh, we don't have anything up for the Quest 2 yet. We're still working on like you know what accessories we want to recommend. I don't feel comfortable recommending accessories until I've tried them. All right, um, but yeah, and so that's what we have there. You also find a join Discord button if you guys have any questions or you want to contact us. You need any help with a you know in all space or whatever. We're happy to help there. Uh, also, you're going to find the most important button on the internet. That's the subscribe button. And when you press it, it lets all space know that you enjoy our content. Right? We don't get paid to do this, so every time we see that number go up, it really makes us feel good and gives us courage to keep on going. Makes us feel even better when you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you are watching on YouTube and you hit that subscribe button, that like button, all that stuff, you will find links to a lot of the stuff we're talking about in the description below. All right, so we actually have that link there in our videos too. So you can find it there also for the lenses if you want to give those a try. All right, and uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Uh, let's see, we have also Woodland, Woodland Moose. What's up? Do you have a question or a comment? Or have you tried an accessory? Oh, yeah couple things hey, one the, the elite head strap is oops can you hear me yeah we can hear okay, you okay the the elite head strap is amazing it holds it stable so you don't it doesn't really fly off or slip or anything yeah. okay um, nice the thing the question i have is is there any way to protect the lenses um while you're wearing your headset because i've heard well some there's a, there's a scratches. few ways if you if you are wearing eyeglasses and even if you're not i would recommend using the spacer that comes with it that can help right okay. i don't use any cleaning products when wiping the lenses only use something that oculus is recommended when it comes to that usually like um, a microfiber cloth will be good for that um i okay. i have heard of people using this like adhesive uh type protective thing like you, you'll see this used on phones as well uh where they'll put on like a, like a clear plastic uh, adhesive that'll go over the over the lenses themselves to prevent you from scratching them. All right, uh, you're going to find that there's going to be a lot of aftermarket products popping up in the next month or so, uh, where you know because everybody's going to want to cash in on how popular this is. Uh, so you're going to there's going to be a lot of you know clever people who are coming out with accessories that you'll be able to use. So keep an eye out for that. I know they did have them for the original Quest, and basically, which is a circle of clear plastic that would like cling to the lens itself. All right. Nice. So let's see. Thank uh, you. All right, no problem. Let's see what else do we have here. Uh, let's see. Uh, we've got time for one more. Let's take Jay. Jay, you're on the air. Where are you, Jay? Jay, Hello. you out there? Up here. Yep, oh, I'm up, up here. Up there. Okay. Hey. Okay. Up um, where? I tried the Oculus 2. Up where? I hear you're above strap. me. Where are you? <laughs> let's see. Okay. Oh, you're out. You're like on the ledge. Like, no, no, that's Fayborg. Okay. Yep. Let's see. Not seeing you. Hey, right here. All right. Okay. Well, there we are. Oh, there you are, Jay. Hi, Jay. What's going on? Yeah, hey. Yeah, I tried the Oculus 2 strap with battery, and okay. it's really good, like it. very, very comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. The battery lasts a long time, too. Yeah, so I, I think the battery is great, but if you're somebody that's going to be using the link cable a lot, I understand that the battery won't work at the same time as the link cable. All right, so bear no, that in um, mind. I don't have a computer, so. Oh, well, then there you're set, and then the battery's the way to go yep. for you. But bear that in mind if you are, like, shopping around for a more comfortable strap. You know, bear that in mind if you're looking at the battery and you're thinking, oh, I can do this while I'm working at the computer. No, you can't. <laughs> All right, you won't be okay. able to plug both mm -hmm. at the same time. All right, so keep that in mind. All right, and uh, let's see. Usually at the end of our events, what we do, right, is we have on the next, on the stage next to me, we have this red button here, right? And what we do is we press this button, and you're going to see a Ravenhall Talon hovercraft fly down the street, go up over those trees, and land in that yard there. So if you're new to Allspace and you haven't learned how to fly yet, we cover that. But likewise, if you have any questions, we'll take them there. All right. And uh, Morgan, if you wouldn't mind hitting that button for me, because I, I don't have my buttons today. We're going to keep smacking it until it happens. There we go. It's going to happen eventually. All right. Maybe not. Morgan, you out there? Ravenhall Talon there you go. aircraft in route right. to your now, If you position. look at the window, you'll see the Ravenhall Talon hovercraft flying down the street. You can fly these if you'd like by coming out and joining me and meeting it at the academy. Right. We'll go check that out. And listen, if you've learned anything here today, please share it with those you come in contact with. Like, let's say that, you know, you, you see somebody and they're down low on the ground. You're like, what's wrong? And they're like, I'm on a quest and I'm stuck in the ground. What do I do? Well, you tell them to press down that left button. Right? 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 Right?
Talon Aircraft is now boarding outside for transport to the Raven Hall Flight Academy. Please exit the building and step into the blue light. Thank you. And that's how we keep this thing going. All right, thanks everybody. You've been a great audience. I'll see you next time.